as we are speaking from or about the power of the gospel I would like to speak about the actual goal of the gospel. The power of the gospel. We have established that the power of gospel of the gospel is not doing circus in church. But it has to do with our way of life. In the book of Romans in chapter 1, verse 16, which we already referred to several times in the last weeks, Paul says that he is not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is not something that we should be ashamed of. The gospel is good news. It's sharing the victory of Christ on the cross. Testified by his resurrection. Because Jesus rose from the death, sinful man can become the righteousness of God. Sinful man can become the righteousness of God. The problem with the world today is that the world is trained, is Conditioned not to believe in an absolute truth. They don't want to believe that God is holy. And he has set eternal rules. And therefore, Satan with his evil began in the 1800s entering into the thoughts of the church changing holiness into rationality and in few Years. Instead of the idea you are alive and God lives in you, began to change as I am who I am and I am I am. It's all about me. And therefore, man dethroned God from the throne of his heart and put on himself on the heart of in the throne of his heart. And we can see and we follow history. And little by little, the, the, the world became conditioned to think about how the academics tell us how to think. And therefore, if we come a bit forward, we find that in the 50s and the 60s, when communism started taking over the thoughts of American university, Christian universities, like Harvard and others, and today they are as liberal as you can get them. And what was for us unthinkable 30, 40 years ago, today is practice. In our little island of Malta, 
fil-gzira zajra tana. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe 20. Aċar s-snin jew o 20 sena ilu. We would have never heard. Az bis konna nisimaw. Of having homosexual marriages. Az bis konna nimmaġinaw li ħaj konna ezwiġi jieto ta' s-sħar. Much less we could hear that they will be able to adopt children calling them of their own. Naħseb wara kem konna nimmaġinaw li ħaj konna. Who would have thought that our country would be on the edge of allowing abortion to become legalized? Today it's on the door and it's knocking there. If you heard the news, I don't have to explain further. The point is that this world has become evil. And evil opposes all that is good. And Jesus already warned us about this age. And Jesus was concerned that the love of many Referring to the church, will grow cold at the end This is why the church needs to be revived. The church needs to kindle that, kindle that fire in her heart. And the church is you and me. The church is not some mystic place that who God, God knows what we can imagine. Definitely is not these four walls. The church is the people that claim they are born again. So myself, Jana Begay, each one of us, we need to have that fire burning in our hearts. Living for Jesus. Not being ashamed that we believe what we believe. Even if everybody turns against us. The Bible says, quoting Jesus, those who remain till the end, will be saved. We cannot play as church anymore. The time has come to be who we are. But the idea of Satan was that I am Joe and I am me and whatever I say to me counts. Well, let us do that. Because who I am is I am a child of God. And that's who I am. And I'm not ashamed to say that I am a child of God. And each one of us must not be ashamed. Not just to say I'm a child of God. But the way we live demonstrates that truly we are children of God. We must be proud that we are children of God. The children of the devil are pride, proud with themselves. Look at the pride march all over the world. What are they proud of? Of. They are proud of something that God condemns. They are proud, proud about the judgment that God judged the world because of idolatry. Because they make themselves above God. And the power of God is able to save. Paul is proud, is not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God. It is the ability of God. To save anyone who believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
He has the power and the ability. The Greek word combines them together. And that's why we find in Hebrews He is able to save all those who want to go to the Father through Him. God is able to save. Hallelujah! He saved you, didn't He? He saved you, didn't he? He saved me. Then he can save all others. But guess what? Someone needs to tell them. It's impossible if your neighbors don't know that you are a child of God. Your neighbors should know that you are a child of God. Your neighbors should know that you believe what you believe. And everywhere else you go. Because if you live as a child of God, you cannot help it, but you'll shine like the new sun. Because the Bible says you are the light of the world. Wherever you are, wherever you go, you will make a change. Even if people don't like you. Even if you suffer of what, because of what you say. You will see God raising you up. God will keep his word. He is your shepherd as we read this morning. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will protect you. Because he is the good shepherd. And you are his sheep. But you must be the type of sheep that have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. You can't be a deaf sheep. You must be a hearing sheep. A sheep that follows. A, a sheep that obeys. A sheep that is willing to be disciplined. A sheep that is willing to sacrifice for the sake of the shepherd. But we don't like that. Because the, the mind of man does not agree with the mind of the spirit. And that's why it's, many times we do not surrender ourselves to Jesus. Because Jesus' rules are different than our rules. Our rules have been formed in our minds by our culture. And our culture is against God. But there is another culture which comes from God of heaven. And that is that culture we need to adapt to and not this culture we're sending people to hell. And therefore as children of God we must have an ever-growing faith. Live by faith. And walk by faith. Just as we sang today. The gospel is the righteousness of God. It is through that righteousness. It is through that righteousness that we can show the world the existence of God. Let me tell you why. The word righteousness before it became a Greek word it was an old Phoenician word used also in the Aramaic and later on in Hebrew. 900 years before Christ, there was this Semitic language starting from Assyria down to the South Egypt and where Saudi Arabia is today and so on. In those days, 
going back to the time of Abraham and before people worshipped idols, gods and the word righteousness referred to a loyalty towards their God in fact when we read some names in the Bible, like Melchizedek, we have one here, where is he? Melchizedek. Melchizedek has, a uh, Melchizedek is just sleeping, sleeping. Yeah, I'm going to Melchizedek comes from two words. Melchizedek, Jamin, Zewch, Kelmet. Melech. Which means king. And tzadek. Which means righteous. So they would get the name of their God. And add with it tzadek. Because when they live according to the rule of their God. They would be considered righteous for their clan or for their people. So we can understand the concept a little bit more now. When we say we are righteous, we are righteous because we are connecting our righteousness with God's righteousness, with Yahweh or Adonai. That's why it's called Yahweh Tzinechu. God my righteousness. And when I live righteous, I am demonstrating that I believe in God, the righteous one. Praise the Lord. This is our responsibility. This is our calling. This is how what you would, we should be. If I am a per, proud person, I say, oh, I want things my way. I want everything to go my way. If you have that in you, you will grow in the Lord. You know why? Because you can make your will God's will. That stubbornness you will make it God's plan in your life. You, before you do it for yourself, because of your ego, and now you want to do it for the glory of God. And you say, I can get less and less and less, so he will be seen more and more. So when people talk about you, and see you, they know that you belong to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do we need the power of the gospel? In the beginning I mentioned that we live uh, uh, in evil days. I'm sure that this is not news for you. Last time I was here, three weeks ago, I think, I don't know. Because I go fishing on Sundays, no. Someone actually believed me. <laughs> said, that's not right for the pastor to go fishing on Sundays. <laughs> they are not here today. <laughs> I was fishing for souls in Gojo. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, what I was, uh, the last time I was here, I mentioned about the euthanasia. And about, and about cannibalism. You remember that? Did anyone do research on that on the internet? It's a pity. It's a pity. Because you need to make sure that what you're hearing is the truth. But something else came last week, I think, or the week before. Which made me feel sick. A young lady, crazy on the CO2 issue, said we must 
eat our babies because there is too much CO2, too much CO2. We must ale, kill and eat babies. So one want to eat elderly people, this one want to eat babies. How more evil can the world get? This was said in the presence of one of the American liberal Senate or whatever they are. The person, a lady, a, a mother herself, was nodding to her. Never rebuked her, never stopped her. This is where we're going to. You can't get more evil than that, can you? But we've been promised evil days in the, in the last days, let it be. We know that cannibalism is a satanic ritual. Like killing babies. Let's see why it's important to understand the righteousness of God. While we are still in the same passage, starting from verse 18. Maybe I can just read verse 18. The rest you know. The wrath, the wrath of God, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by the wickedness. Why is the wrath of God coming? Because of all the godlessness. Because of wickedness. Because men decided to suppress the truth by their wickedness. Later on, you will read that the punishment, I might was the sin of homosexuality. You read it carefully, you read it. Go down where by Zerst and see it. I believe it was Friday, there was a, a priest who was causing some uproar lately. I, I don't know who, it, who he is. But apparently, my favorite TV presenter asked him, asked him if um, sexuality, uh, homosexuality was created by God. Previously, apparently, previously, some priests said that it is. This priest said no. God did not create homosexuals. I wish he kept putting that forward. I wish he would have said, he had the Bible in his hand. I wish he said, and homosexuality is the result of ungodliness. And quote the scripture, show the Bible. The priest, as far as I know, the clip I saw was in there. But guess what? You can say it. Maybe not on TV, but you can say it to your neighbor, you can say it at your supermarket, you can say it at your place of work. You can say the rest and make the righteousness of God known. And use that as an opportunity. Have you seen that program on TV last Friday? Did he say this or not? 
Yes, he did. Well, let me tell you some more about it. You don't have to be ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God of salvation. It is the power of God that regenerates our dead spirit. We are dead because of our sin, the Bible says, or we were dead, let me correct that, we were dead, we were dead, we were spiritually dead, but when we were born again, God gave us life, he gave us a new life in him, and instead of condemned, we have become justified, we were sinful, Condemned to go to that fire of hell. Not the fires of Endor, but the fires of hell. This is the fire that burns forever. He saved us from that fire. He saved us from that torment. And instead, he gave us eternal life with him he gave us the best job we could ever have on this earth the best responsibility that we can ever have preaching the gospel to the lost sharing jesus to those who think they have a good life but they are all most of them are falling into huge depressions. And I'm not talking about chemical depression, which is natural, can happen to anyone. But those type of depressions because people cannot find peace within themselves. Trying this, trying that, trying the other, and they cannot find satisfaction. Not even in their life. Why do they have to open a depression clinic in the University of Walsh a couple of years ago? Why are these people, young people, what's wrong with them? They should be full of life. They're in the right age to be joyful and happy. Yet most of them, the statistics are... Crazy. These are the people that are going to be your doctors and your lawyers. Why on earth are men committing more suicide percentage-wise than women? Why? What's wrong with this? Why is suicide a natural thing today. I received an email this morning from a friend of mine saying, my wife tried to commit suicide last week. Why? I, I know the family, they are great family, they are Christian, they are believers, they serve you there. Why? What's happening? One could be a clinical issue. The other could be because one has no fulfillment in life. And the only fullness of life is found in Jesus. Before we were children of the devil. Now we are children of God. Praise the Lord. We've been adopted into his family. He sanctified us. He washed us. He made us new. We were dirty with our sin. Our sin was red like crimson. And now we are white as snow. I explained this some time ago. That passage in Isaiah had a, has a much more meaningful. Um, uh, is more meaningful to the days to those days than it is to us. Because if you stain some cloth, there is no other way of making it white again. There was no area and bleach and whatever else. So when you have white for it, you've, it, you've 
stained that with red, whatever that could be, red dye, crimson. It's, it's stained forever. But God made an agreement with the people of Israel. Eventually he made it with us later on. Although your, your sins are red like crimson, I make you white as snow. We've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. That's why we are sanctified. And that's why it's important that regularly we repent. Regularly we repent. Regularly we ask forgiveness to God. And change our ways. And do not be the, the liberal Christian by, by the conservative Christians. Because one day we're going to meet with the glorified Jesus. We're going to see him face to face. We're going to meet with the Son of God. We're going to meet with the Savior of our souls. One day he will say, come in my faithful servant. I know, I know in my heart that he will say it to me. Because I'm willing to serve him. With all my mistakes and failings, I'm willing to serve him. The question is, are you willing to serve him? Are you willing to be obedient to him? Are you willing to submit your thoughts to him? One day we'll be glorified. God will give, come on, some people like my age will already feel this pain here and this pain there and you know what I mean once you touch 40s you're no longer who you are am I right Hello, Maria. you're blessed <laughs> things happen when we touch 40s you, you will be dealing with am I growing up or not when you touch 40, you will thinking if you're growing up or not. When you touch 50, say, I know that I'm growing up. When you're nearing 60s, you are for certain. <laughs> you feel like you're falling to pieces when you wake up. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Guess what? Jesus is going to change all that. One day, when we raise from our tomb or we are raptured, he will give a twinkle of an eye. We spend hours waiting for the doctor. But Jesus in a twinkle of an eye will give us a new glorified body. No more arthritis. No more hurting knees. No more headaches. No more death. Deafness. Yeah. No more overweight. Yeah. My problem at Because we will become like him. His, like his glorified body. Hallelujah. Isn't that something to look forward to? That's where the power of the gospel is. I don't have enough time to show more. Maybe I can do this next week. I don't know. How do we use the power of the gospel? I think that's a good title for a new series of sermons. How do we? we have, okay, we have the ability of the gospel. We know that there is power of the gospel. But how do we use it? And it's all in the, in the image of the armory of God. I think we have it here. Yeah, there it is. But we don't have time to do that. Meanwhile, my friends. Make some time to be alone in silence and think about yourself, about you and God. What does God want me to do? How can I forward the gospel of Jesus Christ? With all my weaknesses, 
بدي فيت كلاتي هاي. With all my mistakes. بالزبالي كلاتي هاي. God knows about them. Allah yaf duaro. That's why He's able to transform. Alaku kapati yame. We find in the Bible that He will use a prostitute. And she prostituta. And she became a relative of Jesus Christ. To. He can use anyone. Abraham was an idolater. Abraham. Jacob was a deceiver. Yet they were all part of God's plan and he used them as they he are for his glory. God is able. Regardless who you are. If you failed, you failed. You start again. He is able. But we need to be obedient. Which is the same as walking by faith. Walking by showing what we believe. Demonstrating our life by what Jesus has done in our life. Ask yourself. And ask the Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes. The time is near. And the time of the Second World War. In the First War. And before. People always thought that it was the end times. But many of the prophecies were not fulfilled. Today, the things that Jesus spoke about that 70 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, were unthinkable. That's why we have a lot of interpretation of the Bible from the analogically point of view. They see a glass and they will try to give a meaning that this glass is something else but because they could understand that this glass could be real. No one would believe that Israel will become a state. Nobody would have believed that a third temple would be built. Nobody would believe that the times of Sodom and Gomorrah will come back. And so many other things. We can see them in front of our eyes. People are trying to save the world. Where Jesus decided to destroy it. You cannot go against God's plans. I'm not saying that we should not be careful of to use this, the resources of this world, of course. It is our responsibility. But God said he's going to destroy the world with fire. And these little kids at school are going, are going crazy, killing themselves because they are being told in 12 years that the end, the, the end of the earth is coming. Others don't want to go to school. It's going crazy. Jesus said that this world will burn and will melt. And I believe that is in it. And I will make a new heavens and a new earth. For us, Alina. for the believers, for those who believe in Jesus Christ and make him Lord and Savior. God bless you. Shall we stand up and worship the Lord?